Now listen, as you grow over time, I learned wisdom. I learned mercy. Matter of fact, I would pray for mercy. I would say, God, you know, Micah says, you know, what does the Lord require of you but to do justly, to love mercy, and to walk humbly with your God. God, I want to love mercy. God, help me love mercy. This was my prayer. God, let me love mercy. How many believe God is a merciful God? How many believe mercy triumphs over judgment? How many believe that God ultimately wants to save, redeem, heal, deliver, set free? Amen. God, let me love mercy. Let me look at people through eyes of mercy. And then one day the Lord said to me, oh, Jane, you love mercy when you're the one that needs mercy. I'm just asking you to give people the benefit of the doubt and to give them the same opportunity to get set free, healed, and delivered that I've given to you. So that was for all of you that were raising both your hands. Is that discernment is never an excuse to treat people with disrespect. Even if they're a wolf, you can respectfully throw them out of your church. No, I'm serious. I mean, if they're, if they're not looking to get healed or anything, I, I'm just saying. Sometimes mercy is asking the wolf to leave to protect the people. Sometimes that's mercy. Amen? That's mercy on the people. This is just one small area of discernment. Discerning what's happening in the human spirit. And listen, we've got to guard our hearts. Watchmen have got to guard our hearts. We've got to always allow love to be our motivator, okay? Because sometimes it's very hard when you're very black and white or you see things operating in people's lives, it's very easy to become critical and judgmental. And so what we've got to allow our hearts to do is, I think it's Philippians chapter 1 says, uh, may God increase you in love and all discernment. He partners it together in the same scripture, how many want to be increased in love? How many want to be increased in discernment? For us to be increased in discernment, we must be increased in love. Part of the reason we're not operating in a higher level of discernment is because we're not operating in a higher level of love. And we become more dangerous. Come on. We become more dangerous because we don't see things through the eyes of redemption. Ouch, right? God wants to increase us, but he wants to increase us in love so that we can deal rightly. So discerning the human spirit. Number two, discerning our own hearts. First Kings chapter three, Solomon is just ascending to the throne as David has just died. Already, there's been a coup his brother, Adonijah, crowned himself king. He had to have his brother killed. He had to have David's general killed. He had to have David's priest banished. This is not a super good start to his kingship, right? And yet he was anointed and appointed by God. So he goes up to Gibeon to offer sacrifices up there. And as he offers all these sacrifices, he has a dream that night. And in 1 Kings chapter 3, the Lord comes to him in a dream and says, Solomon, what is it I can do for you? And Solomon says, Lord, you see that I'm, I'm taking over some, I'm filling some pretty big shoes, but I'm just a child. I don't know how to rule this people. I don't know how to do what's right. Give your servant a discerning heart, a heart of wisdom, a heart that operates in true justice and leadership so that I can rule your people well. Solomon asked for wisdom. He asked for discernment. Why? Because his heart was insecure. Because he knew that God was bringing him to a new positioning of leadership. How many believe that God wants to mantle you for leadership in this next season? Come on, we need to understand that God wants to mantle us for influence. That's what a leader is. It's an influencer. Whether you become an influencer in your job, an influencer in the church, an influencer in your community, God wants to mantle us for influence. But in order for him to do that, we've got to pray this same prayer. God, give me wisdom. God, give me discernment so that I can rule the people well so that I can lead the people well. 
And it says the thing that Solomon asked for, all this is going on in a dream. The thing that, this, that Solomon asked for pleased the Lord. And God said, because you've asked for discernment and wisdom in administering justice, and you've not asked for wealth or riches or the life of your enemies or any of these other things, <laughs> I'm going to give you all those things, but I'm also going to make you the wisest man that ever lived. Would it be great if all the prayers that we spent on money, positioning, opportunity, instead were spent on, God, give me wisdom. God, give me discernment. God, let me become a strong leader. Come on. God said, if you'll seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, all these other things will be added unto you, right? But Solomon had to deal with his own heart. See, many times we, we think that discernment looks like this. And if discernment looks like this, we've got to remember there's all these other fingers pointing back at us. We've got to use the gift of discernment to discern our own heart. This is where dreams and visions come in because I tell you what, God has <laughs> laid the hammer on me and things in my own heart that I wasn't taking care of through a dream or a vision. Because we need to understand that Proverbs tells us the heart is deceptive. A man that trusts his own heart is a fool. So our heart will tell us all day long, you're doing great. When God says, yeah, except for this little major area of sin in your life. What about this issue of unforgiveness in your life? Come on, what about these issues in your life? God has taken me through a process. Listen, watchmen need to learn how to listen to the voice of God to discern what's going on around you, but also to discern your own heart. Because listen, when a watchman's heart gets out of alignment, we don't see right. So God wants to deal with our heart. God wants to deal with our heart to, to keep us in this place of victory, to keep us in this place of purity. And I could tell you a number of dreams. There, it, the stories are in my dreams and visions books, but how God actually used dreams and visions to deal with my heart. Remain, maintaining a humility. Just because you see, listen, <laughs> Balaam's donkey saw more than Balaam saw. The demons saw more than the disciples saw. So seeing does not make you a spiritual giant. We've got we've to maintain a humility in our walk with God so that we can become powerful. Amen. So we've got to be able to discern our own heart and the issues of our own heart so that we can stay in right alignment with God. Alignment is going to be more and more important as the days go by. Because there's going to be a lot of things that are pulling people. A lot of opinions, a lot of stuff that's happening. And we've got to keep our hearts in right alignment with the Word of God and with the Spirit of God.